Hey, welcome to this radio video and uh, in this video we're going to do another video for the tutorial on FLDG decoding signals. And today we're going to show you how to decode radio teletype, but the amateur radio radio teletype. And there's a reason I mentioned that. It's because radio te teletype of or you might have seen many articles where they refer to it as RTTY uh, as several settings but the amateur radio teletype is usually only one type of setting so you don't have to play around with the numbers to decode it so of course we're choosing the easiest one now where do you find radio teletype signals they are found in general at the uh, top end of the 80 meter band, so for example around 3.580 and up you might find some. Another spot where you might find some around 7.080 and up there might be some. There might be some on 14.080 and up. This is an RTTY signal Seems, seems to be pretty much the only one. You might hear some on 21.080 and up. And also on 28.080 and up. It's usually in a, about 20 kilohertz, so between, you know, 080 and 100. That's pretty much where you'll hear it. So let's go back to 14.080 where I'm hearing some. Once you hear it, you have to go into your FLDG software. There you will choose in the menu in op mode on the upper left, you'll choose RTTY and then choose RTTY 45. Now you see there's 50, 75 and 75W. We'll get to those later on. So RTTY 45 so it should say RTTY at the bottom and now you have to match the two lines with the two lines of the waterfall of a signal so you see that a radio teletype signal has two vertical lines you have to align both lines of your waterfall with the two vertical lines and once you do normally you should decode like this is RTTY and uh, this is basically two stations talking together on radio teletype. Radio teletype in the amateur band is sent in what we call BAUDO. It's a type of signal or it's a type of um, digital signal for radio teletype. But there's also something called ASCII, which is more of a computer version of radio teletype um, so there are different uh, languages if you want in the digital modes but uh, most of the amateur radio teletype is Baudo and it's pretty easy to decode as you see here as long as you have a good signal and as long as you have the two lines matching the two lines in the waterfall of a radio teletype signal this was probably one of the most popular digital modes in the 80s and 90s, but when all the other modes came up, um, and especially BPSK31, um, there seems to be less and less people using radio teletype nowadays. But if you tune the bands, you're pretty sure to hear some uh, pretty regu regularly. Um, I would say that in a you know half hour of radio listening, you'll probably hear a few signals in radio teletype. But they're not as popular as BPSK31, and it's obvious. The bands are more quiet in the radio teletype. One thing that happens on radio teletype is some weekends you might actually notice there's tons and tons and tons of signals on the amateur band. And that's because there are contests that are in radio teletype. So it's pretty cool for that also, and it's nice to, you know, get all these stations from all over the world. So here you see they're having a good old conversation. That's always fun, you know? 
I like having you know contacts exchanged in certain modes, but I must say one thing: when stations are actually having a real clear conversation in a digital mode, it's always fun. You can you know just read their chatting and um, you know decode these signals, and of course you have the same effect. So here you have two stations talking together. One is W5MXO, the other one is W9IKU. You can go to QRZ.com to uh, you know, check what stations are and where they are located. It's always nice to uh, you know, have these decoding. So this is one mode of radio teletype. As I told you, there was 75 with N and W and these are uh, first of all the number is the speed RTTY 45 is the speed that is in the amateur mode the amateur radio mode is sent at 45 baud but the commercial modes are sent at 50 or even 75 baud so that's why it's different and the reason why you also have N and W is because they mean narrow or wide and they have to um, in effect the distance in frequency between the two lines so if you're in a narrow you'll see the lines are closer together but if you're in a radio teletype that is wide you'll see the two lines are stretched much farther away from each other so that's why you have to choose the good mode but for this video purpose we only stick to the RTTY 45 which is the standard amateur radio mode and its shift is what we call 170 Hertz that's the distance between the two peaks that you see on the display they're actually two different tones and they are 170 Hertz apart. So that's why on the bottom left you can see RTTY with the mode and next to it you see 45.45 slash 170. That means it's radio teletype at 45.45 baud and 170 Hertz, which is the, pretty much the standard in amateur radio teletype. So here you can see a good clear conversation and it's always rewarding you know to decode something and especially when you have a big um, you know conversation like you see here it's always cool to uh, you know just go through and watch the uh, the text as you go on sometimes one of the biggest problems I've seen is the fact that the transmitting and receiving stations aren't exactly tuned to the frequency so you sometimes like you know these two stations are really really directly one on the same frequency the same tones and that's cool because it makes it easy but they're often the case where one station and the other are slightly off which means that every time you they change when you hear the other station you have to readjust in the waterfall to match the lines perfectly make sure you align very perfectly because one of the biggest thing about uh, teletype and any digital signals if you're a little bit off in the waterfall when you actually tune it it will increase the number of errors that the program will make while decoding and it's especially important when you have signals that are weak and in the noise so this is amateur radio teletype hope you enjoy hope you find some uh, like I said, it's always cool. And to remind you again, the re the the spots where you you'll hear usually teletype, radio teletype is 3.580 and up. Tune around this band. Uh, 7.080 and up. 14.080. And up. I know there are some around 18 on 100 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, from time to time. And so there's, you know, there are a few here, but they're not as used as the other bands. 
21.080 and up. And finally, 28.080 and up is where you'll find some radio teletype. As you see, there's not a lot today at, as I'm doing this demo. I was actually, I decided to do the demo actually because as I tuned around, I noticed these two stations actually talking with each other and I said, okay, it's now or never because there are some uh, times where, you know, radio teletypes are actually uh, rare. So um, it depends on the time of day um, for these modes, but um, tune around regularly and I'm pretty sure that uh, you'll actually stumble upon radio teletype. Um, you know, if you don't hear anything in these frequency bands, come back 15 or half an hour later and try it again. Um, you know, it's not used as much as it was in the past, but it's still used enough that I think you'll uh, easily find some RTTY signals on the bands. Here's one station. This one is weaker. It's actually a little weird, it didn't sound totally like radio teletype. So, um, hope you enjoyed this series on decoding the different uh, digital modes. And of course, we will go into commercial modes slowly and try to decode some stuff, um, for example, in radio teletype with a wider um, radio teletype signal. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to find something. So, uh, here we go, there's another station. So to give you a little idea of what he's saying here, CQ, CQ, CQ means he's sending out for someone else. He wants to, uh, you know, sending out a call. He wants anybody out there to answer his call. And then it says DE, so which means from. And finally, it's K0PQ, which is the call letters. And like I said, when you go to um, the QRZ.com website, so for example, I'll go here just for your enjoyment. Let's go to QRZ.com and uh, it does require a free um, inscription, but it's totally free. So once you're on QRZ.com, like I said, the station's K0PQ, as you see here, so you can enter K0PQ and you'll see that this is the station Stephen W Banks he's in Lakewood Colorado and you have all sorts of details sometimes you got cool pictures of the shack the antennas and so on so uh, it's a great website to use to ID all these amateur stations so uh, good luck with your radio teletype decoding hope you guys enjoy these digital modes and you know, it has another side to shortwave listening. So, uh, 73s.